As small business uh, people continue to suffer from the cumulative impact of a recessed global economy and uh, COVID-19, there seems to be a commensurate need for digital school uh, tools rather and skills. The coaches, consultants and small and medium enterprises need to scale, uh, especially in a country like Nigeria. Joining us now to look at this for a while is Daniel Ofolor, a uh, digital and tech entrepreneur. He is the founder of uh, Softlink at uh, .i and uh, chief executive officer of Digital Medium Africa. It's good to have you. Welcome. Now, Daniel, Nigeria's uh, tech ecosystem may still be regarded as being in, in its infancy, uh, but growing. What would it take to maintain this momentum and embrace this uh, for entrepreneurship and, of course, uh, SMEs? Thank you very much for having me this afternoon. Um, I mean, the tech in industry in Nigeria continues to grow, right? Um, SMEs continue to grow, um, even though, you know, there is um, a lot of challenge in the, in the country and a lot of challenge in the economy as it were, you know, but I think that if we must grow, what, what we need to do is entrepreneurs need to become smarter. Right, it's as simple as that. Entrepreneurs need to think now of scale, right, and not of what they are going to, you know, eat today or what they are going to get from, you know, immediate um, activities and the result that they're able to generate in terms of cash flow. But they need to become smarter in terms of the tools, right, and in their skills and in their knowledge, right, of actually running a profitable business, especially with, you know, within the terrain of, you know, the the Nigerian context. Um, I think a little bit of that is. What can you do to grow? What activities? Because we need to look at activities critically because activities is what brings profit or loss in business. Okay. So entrepreneurs now need to look at what activities am I, you know, running in my business today that is costing me money and is not bringing any result. They need to kill those activities. That's called cutting the fat, right? And then what activities am I supposed to engage in right now that can actually lead to more revenue, that can lead to better service delivery for my customers, you know, and overall customer satisfaction and retention and so if you're thinking in terms of activities within the scope of that then you know you can begin to innovate on, on certain things that you're doing right and then you can begin to cut down on certain things that you're not supposed to be doing and i think that's a very good start well, thank you. Uh, we understand that you've trained about 100,000 African entrepreneurs on business strategy and digital marketing. I'm just wondering what are some of the most common challenges that they have faced and when it comes to you know, strategy and marketing? Um, thank you very much. Now, that, that is, I think, a very um, important question, right, which is, what are the problems that they are faced in terms of, you know, strategy and in terms of marketing? Because, you know, these two things um, contribute to why most small businesses die between the first three years. Now, the question, I think, again, should be, how is it possible that I've been able, myself and my organization, I've been able to train over 100,000 SMEs in 70 countries, right? It's the use of technology. The thing about technology is this. Technology itself does not make a business great. It is the use of technology that accelerates, you know, a great business. So it's not just the fact that hey, you bring technology into this business and everything is going to work. No, that's the mistake a lot of people make. They think that if I, you know, invest in technology, this business is going to work and it's going to succeed. No, but how do you use technology? Okay, and then this technology, are you using it with already existing business model that is working? Because otherwise you can accelerate failure with technology as well. So um, if you look at this, then it becomes easy to say, good. How then can we bring in technology in our business strategy? How then can we bring in technology in our marketing? Any business that does this anywhere in the world will succeed. And if you do it right. Now, a very good example is how we have been able to train about 100,000 people in 70 countries. And it's simple. What we used was simply what is called a sales funnel. Okay. But in this case, we didn't have an army of developers. We didn't have an army of, you know, salespeople making calls to customers around the world to say, okay, come and learn from our academy. No, we simply went online, right, using a platform like softlink.ai, which is, you know, the platform that I use now. Right. And then we ran Facebook advertisement because why? Facebook already has over 1 billion people around the world. And I have access to those 1 billion people from the back end of Facebook. Right. Which is another thing I think I should touch on because most small businesses spend a lot of time on the front end of Facebook. Right. That's OK if you're an influencer. That's OK if you're a celebrity or this kind of stuff. But if you're an entrepreneur, you're a business owner, you're looking for customers. You can't spend time working, you know, posting pictures five times every day and hope that some way, you know, 
um, a lot of people will say, it. yeah, you can get a few people, but that is not enough to sustain your business. And so what entrepreneurs and what small businesses on the continent must do today is to use the back end of Facebook and use the back end of Google and use the back end of LinkedIn advertisement. So those are the ads platform because the people who use Facebook from the front end are the users. Those who use it from the back end are the customers. So Facebook knows their customers. And so if you're able to run highly targeted ads to people who are interested in your product and services and send that traffic okay, to your funnel, which is your landing page, right, and present an offer to them, you can grow your business faster than ever. So if you can do that in your, with your business strategy and in, uh, infuse that as well in your marketing, then you can have a business that is growing irrespective of what the economy is saying. Because even though the economy is, you know, the chips are down, there are still people who need goods and services. That has not changed. There are still people who have cash in their account and who have money to buy those goods and services. What you need now is the creativity and the, you know how do I find those people irrespective of where they are so if you've been selling to people in Lagos you know and Abuja alone you need to start thinking how about that person in Logun State how about that person in Kano how about that person in Calabar can I use Facebook to assess them can I send the traffic to you know a very um highly converting landing page and can I grow my business faster that way if you can grow faster than the economy then you succeed Indeed, Daniel, no doubt uh, artificial intelligence is gaining ground uh, in the yes. adoption of uh, business tools and models, as it were. So what are the future of SMEs despite uh, logistic uh, shortcomings in Nigeria, you think? In terms of logistic, uh, you know, the very first thing is we can't fix logistic except the postal service in the nation works, right? There is no way. So there is no private sector that can come you know, and invest, even if you buy vehicles and buy bikes, you know, and buy all those things and try to do delivery, right, as a way, because physical, in the end, if you, if you look at business these days, you know, there's a digital side of it. There's people who sell digital products, right, and, and soft link attends to them very well. Now, there's a, there's a physical part of it as well. Right, which we also attend to. And we, we've struggled to really help the guys on the physical side succeed. And the reason is because, you know, there's this problem of last mile delivery. How do I get this physical product, right, to the customer who has made the order? That's the question that millions of small businesses are unable to answer. Not just because they're unable to answer it, but they're unable to answer it cheaply, right? If you can, you know, deliver a product of 5,000 euro, you can't ask me to spend 3,000 euro delivering a product of 5,000 euro. It doesn't make economic sense. And this is where government is supposed to come in to say, what do we need to do to make the postal service work and make it as cheap, as effective, and as accessible right, um, to small businesses? Now, I live in the UK now, but guess what? Amazon, as big as Amazon is, still uses the postal service. They still rely, right, on the British postal system, on the Queen's postal system to get their products to customers. So that is the foundation of it. Now, Jumia, Konga, all other players can come in, GIG Logistics can come in and make certain investment. But I'll tell you that even they themselves will need the postal system to do certain things. And, and really, government can do this and make it cheap and make it affordable and still be profitable. This is the problem. If we don't fix this problem, let me tell you this, Jumia, Konga, they will just label. They will label and label and label for a long time, but they may not necessarily move the needle on the continent. Mm. Well, Daniel, um, we know that you've attained global recognition from the likes of the United Nations. I'm just wondering what the biggest challenge has been in terms of transferability or adapting the knowledge that you've acquired globally in Nigeria. Okay, um, thank you very much. Now, that... I, I mean, um, I started my business about 10 years ago, right? I took over my late starts business, Patrick Oliveson and Florence Show, and, you know, it was a video production business. Now, my wedding photography business did very well, even 2015, 2014, 20, you know, we, did, we were doing weddings all the time. And we did very well as an organization, and we're still doing that because we're still in that business. But I took a step back in 2019 when, you know, God told me specifically, say, go after my people and share this thing that you've seen on how to grow a business successfully with others. And that is what made us start Danofoli Academy, right? To train, you know, a lot of people. And that, really, that's, that's what I spend, give or take 30% of my time doing these days, to try to give back knowledge. Because I know that if you open more minds, right, you can open more markets. And so educating entrepreneurs on the continent is not what we are doing just because, you know, we want it to be, you know, in the best interest 
of ourselves as an organization, no, but also in the interest of the entrepreneur and also in the interest of the continent. Because for us to be a great nation, you know, the critical amount of people in Nigeria must be wealthy. We need to think about mass wealth. And so how do you do that? You have to educate the people. It's personal development that brings results. If you don't have the right people in any economy, no matter the business that hires them, they're going to let them go in the hand because they can't move the needle in those organizations. And so people development is something that we have aggressively done, right? And God has helped us with technology to be able to accelerate our growth. But this is also something that I think that the Nigerian government and the next government, you know, must do if we need to succeed. Now, there was a time in the world where all you needed to do as a nation is start from agriculture. From agriculture, you go into manufacturing, where where you're profitable in manufacturing and then you can do everything else and go into innovation and technology. That model is dead. You can't go that route anymore. So you can't say you want to invest in agriculture. I mean, the likes of China, you know, even America and other countries did that and did that very well. But the next level of growing a nation fast now is going to come from the people, the human resources, right? And that is why you see that American organizations are investing in tech startups all over the world. Why? Because if you invest in a tech startup all over the world, those companies are registered in America. So it means that they are still an American entity, even though they're in your nation, right? So they are tapping into the human resources because it's innovation and idea and it's highly scalable, right? So they're tapping into the human resources in the in the other nation. So as much as they're interested in getting gold from um, Congo, right, they're interested in getting the smartest people who are building technology uh, you know solutions in nigeria now how can nigeria leverage these and take very quick action you know and, and win in the same place all we need to do is invest in technology skills and empower our people to take global jobs because you know why we now live in a global economy american china all countries are looking for to hire people right even though those people don't come to their nation so a software developer now can be in nigeria if he's talented and end five thousand dollars every month working for an you know a company in america and it doesn't need to leave you know the nation now look at that and look at the millions of people we have in nigeria the young population about 40 50 million of them in the next 10 years that's going to change drastically because that number is great growing fast so we have the youngest population you know of any nation in the world right now and in the next decade is going to expand so what we need to do is let the government create a critical mass right of education of technology of digital skills right and innovation in these people and make sure that you remove all the bottlenecks that doesn't allow those people to get international opportunities open it up let them go on upwork let them go on fiverr invest in local solutions doing the same thing enable them to take jobs that are global so that they can bring in foreign direct investment if we can do this and do it successfully what you will find out is that in the next 10 20 years our biggest source of fx is not going to be oil right or, or, or cocoa or any other thing it's going to be the people and so but we need to invest in them and it's not just some sort of side arrangement no we need to go to the foundation the institution every young person in nigeria must pass through a university so go back to the universities mandate them to have an alliance with a technology company to ensure that every computer science student every computer engineering student is trained with digital and technology skills you don't have any choice take those courses right and then get the people who are also interested if you're studying Europe, if you're interested in being part of those technology innovation courses bob in it should be a general course it shouldn't be optional i have a software developer works for me in europe part of my employee the guy earns five thousand dollars every month and guess what he went to polytechnic spent just two years in polytechnic that's all is done all his life but he's extremely extremely good and is able to take that forex because he's got that skill so i've seen this pattern and we have the numbers but we need to make the investment if the next government does not do this. I don't care how fantastic the government may be. If we don't do this and invest in our people, we can't take global opportunities in the next 20 years. And so this is something that the nation must do. And the young people also need to take responsibilities. And if we do that, you know, we'll have a good nation. First. Indeed, uh, Daniel, uh, hopefully the authorities are listening to your suggestions. Uh, human capacity development is the way to go uh, at this moment. Uh, still on what you just mentioned, uh, regarding those you have trained, what has been yes. the uh, response uh, in terms of how they're getting on and impacting positivity uh, in their spheres of uh, businesses uh, regarding the digital schools you've offered uh, skills rather you've offered them? Yeah, um, thank you. So now what we've seen because we take testimonials a lot, 
right? We've seen these young people who, you know, took a skill with us online, either from our Facebook course, our Google Ads course, you know, or our digital marketing courses. And they went by themselves to start a digital marketing agency. And these guys are earning, you know, six, seven figures every month today. Now, not because they studied science in university or because they studied banking and finance, no because they took an online course, right, at Danofoli Academy. Now, this is the empowerment that we are seeing. Now, some of them learn photography from us, and they've been able to do, you know, extreme good work with this photography. Some have become product photographers, wedding photographers, and, you know, they are able to, you know, get paid for those skills. And you see, skills, and that's why we really focus on skills, because if you want to empower someone, you can either give them money, right, <laughs> or, or give them skill, or help them to start a trade, you know. But we have realized that, the best and the most profitable so far has been skills. And the reason why we, and that's why we made the decision to focus on empowering people with skills. We have about 30 online courses, right? Which is about, you know, 25 skills that you can have from learning from Danofoli Academy. Now, why do we choose skills? Because with skills, if you render services, services, you can keep a lot of the profit. So if you render service for maybe 100,000, most likely you can keep 70, 80%, right? If you're really in a profitable business. But with products, there's, you know, the cost of goods sold. So it means that you need to buy that product. And by the time, even if you sell a product of 10, k right your profit margin is maybe 10 20 percent if if you know maybe you're selling you know wig for instance or some brazilian air right and so we notice that with skill you get to keep a lot of the money and that's why we are focused on empowering these young people you know with the right skills and these skills are hot skills because they're digital skills facebook advertising and all that so the market is there you know for selling online courses digital products i also work with coaches and consultants right to get their message to the world. So that's the consultation arm of what we do to ensure that not just us as an organization, but other coaches, right, are able to also reach a large market because this is also another transformation that we need as a nation. Now, the entire skill sets that a human being or a young person in Nigeria would need to succeed in the world today cannot come from the university. So coaches and consultants must take responsibility, right, to now begin to create communities because community is the future, right? Create communities, teach them. So if you're very good with business strategy, take young people, run a Facebook ad, get them into a membership portal. If you take 200, you take 1,000 people. We have taken about 100,000 people, right? We have 20,000 who are learning from us daily. So if you take 1,000 people and you train them and you empower them, these people, it, there's going to be a snow, snowball effect. And so all the pretty consulting businesses in Lagos and in Abuja, servicing only corporate clients, they now need to look back and say, you know what? We've done very well with corporate bank, you know, banks, GTB, etc. Can we create an arm for people development for the sake of our nation and the empowerment of mankind? And so when they create those units, you don't have to stop your entire business with corporate clients. No, we, we, we as well have corporate clients, but we create this small arm, which is the Nefoli Academy, to take care of these young people for the sake of posterity and for the sake of nation beauty. And so if we can do that, right, at scale and in clusters, then honestly, we can transform people because we've seen lots of coaches. There are some coaches who teach you, you know, diction. Some will teach you how to speak English. Some will teach you manners. Some will teach you emotional intelligence. So, you know, so the, the, there are lots of topics. And so imagine if you have all those coaches doing very well and reaching out to young people, we can begin to do what is called social reengineering, right? And empowering our people in the right way. And that's what we hope to see. Very enlightening discussion there. Uh, Daniel Fuller, we show a digital and tech entrepreneur. I'd like to thank you for your thoughts on those issues. Good to have you with us.